Hello, it's James from xrobots.co.uk. This is part 58 and the final official build episode of my Iron Man Hulkbuster suit. As you can see, I've started this episode where I left off part 57. I'm actually doing it a few minutes after the end of that video. I'm wearing exactly the same clothes and sitting in the same place. So as I say, this is the last official build episode for this project, or is it? At the end, you will have a choice. So make sure you watch this video to the end, vote a thumbs up, and you will also get a vote in a poll in this video through a new feature in YouTube that allows me to put polls up. And it may not be the last episode, depending on how you vote. So, for the rest of this video, I'm just going to get on detailing up the bottom of the legs, getting the repulsors back in, putting the extra little bits of fill in, and I have to look at the bottom of those ankles to see what I can do there at the back, and then pretty much that's the whole suit finished. I've wired up the knee repulsors there to a little power regulator, it's just one of these adjustable ones, and I've just set it for 3 volts, which means I can feed them from anything. At the moment they're running from an 11.1 volt LiPo, so I'll probably just drop some wires down from the body battery, to power them with a couple of connectors so I can take the legs off. These have got little screw hole mounts I put in here, so these fit obviously in here and then they mount onto the uh, wood basically, that screws onto the wooden frame inside. However, even with them screwed on they're a little bit wobbly so I need to do something about that. Right, so I've screwed them on just in there and now I need to put some sort of thing at the front to stop that wobbling which I think is just going to be a bit of foam either side, each side at the back. Here they are, so that's a lot firmer now, and they won't wobble as I move around. As well as doing something about these bits of fabric here, I'm going to put a frame on each side, basically, on the edges there, to get rid of the tatty fabric. Now, I think that's just about salvageable, and I had some issues with these last time. Check out that episode if you haven't watched it. I probably need a little bit of a fill-in on the inside of the leg there, where the overhang is but there's not going to be too much else on the inside, as I described last time. I do, however, need to do something about the bottom of the leg there. So I mentioned last time about putting some fabric in here to fill it in, but of course as we open the leg here, the distance here gets much greater. So I'm going to try stringing a bungee across here and seeing if it can stretch enough, and then perhaps that could have a kind of um, seam along the fabric, so the bungee goes along inside the fabric, and then one side can almost stretch as it gets bigger. I've made these 3D printed hooks so that I can glue them on and tie some bungee rounds, two at the top and two at the bottom of each side. I've glued those things in and I've tied two bits of elastic bungee cord there, so I've got one that runs here and one on the other side. So they're not really tight, but they're tight enough, and as I open the back of the leg here, let's just operate that lever, of course they stretch out, so uh, that means they fill the gap still, so what I need to do now is put a piece of fabric between them or something hung on them, with a hem that goes around them so it can slide up and down and this can still stretch to be longer. Right, so now this opens, and as it does so, this can stretch, and the fabric's still in there, and then when I pop it back in, everything's good again, and of course this can move around in all directions as the leg moves, because this is quite flexible and stretchy. I 
I made a couple of 3D prints there, which are these edging pieces, which I've painted gold. And I've also made some bits of foam here, and these again have been painted up with PVA and then sprayed up. So these bits are going to get stuck onto these. And those are going to go on the inside of the leg by those knee joints. And then I've got some that are just going to be smooth for the outside where they rub on the other panel. So I'm just going to hot glue those on. There we go. And I've also got some other bits and pieces to go on the back and fill in some of those sections. These are probably the last parts. Or are they? Well, let's stick them on anyway and see. Right, we need to have a talk. I started the Hulkbuster project on April the 15th, 2014, which was well over two years ago. And it was a year before the movie came out with Hulkbuster in it when we didn't even know what it was gonna look like. And I basically modified the thing to make it wider and stuff as I went and all of that's in the 58 episodes so far, which you can watch in my channel. In fact, pretty much building everything in detail as you see it now has been put into there. The woodwork, the 3D printing, the mechanical design, electronics, coding, all of it. So, in those days I had about 80,000 subscribers or less and now I've got basically 380,000 subscribers. So a lot of people have come along in that two years and I know some people have subscribed because of the Hulkbuster project, but obviously I've had other projects along the way. Now, I originally started X Robots, the website xrobots.co.uk to show my robot projects and this is around in 2004 and 2005 and I've built um, quite a few walking robots since then some work better than others I've got uh, one of them here and this is Android 12 who's called Android 12 for a reason and if you look in my channel you can see this working um, of a fashion and you can also see Android 11 which worked pretty well but was smaller um, and those Androids didn't even have an Arduino in them they had some form of dynamic stability using uh, radio control helicopter heading gyros but they didn't work particularly well I've learned quite a lot with the other projects including BB-8 and various other robotics projects from a mechanical design point of view don't forget of course that I've got my Ultron project the real robot that's standing just here uh, which moves from a motion capture suit um, only if it wants to though because it's going to have its own AI so I'm already doing quite a lot of robotics projects and that's really what I want to do so the next actual projects I'm going to do in my channel is going to be another two-legged walking humanoid robot about that size and it's going to be a Star Wars character and I think I can do a much better job of it now from what I've learned over the years of building all the other projects so even though I've said Hulkbuster is finished basically and this is the last episode I am actually going to do another episode for testing and that's going to be at an event hopefully where people can see it but I can't make events happen just when I want them to so I need to wait for one to come round in the next couple of months. 
There's a bit of a problem with testing it outside because my house is on the edge of a hill, so there's no flat ground apart from in the middle of the road, which isn't a great place to set it up because cars won't be to drive past and people will complain and so on. So I really do need to take it to somewhere where people can help me, I can transport it there and I can show it in front of people, hopefully at a sci-fi event where they'll want to see it. So, I could however come back and do another episode to do some more detailing, perhaps stuff on the inside of the helmet or the shoulder guns and things like that. Um, but basically it's going to be me sticking bits of painted foam and 3D prints onto the suit, and I don't know how bored people are of actually seeing that sort of content. So, you get a choice now as to whether I actually do that. Now, the bipedal humanoid robot project is going to happen anyway, but I can revisit Hulkbuster for one more special episode before testing if you want. However, you might think that it's time better spent doing something else cool that's slightly related. And I've got a couple of other projects I'd really like to do as maybe Friday videos. One of those is to build an actual working exoskeleton power arm with a kind of backpack of some sort of power, probably electric with electric motors, and a big frame over one arm with a big actual operating hand on that makes me stronger on one arm. So there's quite a lot of interesting control stuff I'd like to do on that, because how do you make it move when you move and stop when you stop? So there's a few other exoskeleton projects on YouTube, including a pneumatic one from the Hacksmith who you should check out, but so far I haven't seen any control systems for that, so I'd like to actually work on that side of it and make a controllable, functional exoskeleton arm. The other thing I'd really like to try is propulsion devices. Everyone says, have I made an Iron Man suit that can fly? And there's a few other things going on on YouTube and around media at the moment about people building real hoverboards with rockets and propellers, but I've got some other ideas about how perhaps that could be done more cheaply, and I'd like to do some testing on that. So would you rather see me sticking bits of foam and 3D prints onto Hulkbuster, or would you rather see one of those other projects first? So you get to vote in a poll which should appear in the cards, which I believe are going to be on your top right as you're watching, which is my top left. So there should be a little eye thing there where the cards are for recommended videos, and you should see in there somewhere there's a poll you can vote. So the options will be more bits of foam and 3D print stuck on Hulkbuster to detail it up, possibly more lighting, something like that, the exoskeleton arm, or experimenting with flying. And as I say, the bipedal robot is going to happen anyway, and that's going to happen next week. Here's a shot of those legs. I've positioned them so you can see the backs and the sides pretty clearly. I think I'm pretty happy of how that looks. Obviously, the back of the knees I'm not happy with, and neither is anyone else. But you get a choice as to whether I come back to do something about it, or do some other projects, so don't forget to vote in the poll. And there we are, so it's an end of an era. Or maybe it isn't, and you get to decide. So that is um, going to possibly be the last episode of Hulkbuster, but no one really knows at the moment. But next week will be my new bipedal walking robot, so don't forget to check back and watch that video to see how I'm going to make that work, and then Ultron will be coming back the Tuesday after that, and watch out for occasional Friday videos as well. All right, that's all for now. 